much closer to the beginning of his career, and he's been spectacular for the last month. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they still need help to get into the playoffs, but they've won three straight games since Lamar came back from his bout with COVID, and his offensive coordinator, Greg Roman, says right now he's playing better than anybody. I feel like I should play like that all the time. It's, it's nothing more, nothing less. You know, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. And the whole team, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. We, we haven't done anything yet. And like I said, we're finally getting the playoffs right now. So we just got to keep staying focused on the um, task at hand right now. Well, let's just put other numbers up on the screen and let you see just how good he's been these last three weeks. Those are NFL ranks that you see on the right side there. So he leads the league in total QBR. He's tied for the most total touchdowns. The Ravens have gone 3-0 and during that stretch, including that thrilling Monday night game where they beat Cleveland. Again, they still do need help to get into the playoffs, but they feel like they'd be a pretty dangerous team were they to get there. Bart, you are my former Raven. What are you seeing in Lamar right now? What are you seeing in the Ravens? I mean, Lamar is doing what he's always done. I don't see any innovation from Greg Roman in trying to evolve this offense, being able to push the ball down the field. I think Hollywood Brown has been a huge disappointment. Willie Snead had the audacity to complain about not getting some attempts at him last year. I mean, last week, you know, he's been able to be able to, to, to be effective with his legs and do what Lamar Jackson does. But in the playoffs, the competition is different. You're not playing, you're playing against playoff caliber teams. And I understand that Cleveland's that, but that's playing little brother. You understand and know that team better than any other team because you play them so often. I'm concerned with Lamar Jackson's um, lack of weapons and the inability to really be, beat teams from within the pocket. Until he does that, until he wins a playoff game, I think that you have to make sure that you pick up his option, but you don't give them the Mahomes deal. I think you tell Lamar, hey, we're going to give you a, your Amari Cooper and see if you can take it to the next level because the league is going to always continue to catch up. And I think when you go out there and you know that you don't have to put um, two safeties deep, you know you can put another safety in the box and you see what you know San Diego at that time Chargers did by putting an extra safety on the field to put more athletes that can play in space. That's going to be the recipe to stop Lamar. And if this team falls behind, when can Lamar Jackson win a playoff game by throwing from within the pocket? That remains to be seen. I think the answer is no. They have to win a certain type of way, and they have a small margin for error. Well, so much has been made of the fact that he is 0-2 in the playoffs. That is well documented. But, Mike T., I sort of have a feeling that this team, they feel like a dangerous one. Maybe they're sort of more suited to be the team that sneaks in there from behind and scares people. How do you see them in this postseason? Yeah, Greeny, I agree with that, and I see it differently than Bart. I think we saw a transformational moment with Lamar Jackson when he came back on that fourth and five play against the Browns. He broke contain. Everyone thought he was going to run it. He pulled up through a touchdown pass to a Hollywood Brown. There's very few players that could do it. And I'll tell you this, Kansas City, there's only two players on the planet that could send them home without a championship ring, Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. And if Baltimore gets hot, and I see it differently than Bart, because what's going on right now is the game is slowing down for Lamar. Experience is starting to matter to him. And he can carry this team all by himself and make those three or four plays in a game that could send anybody home. Set in. That's an interesting one. Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. The, the thing that both of them can do, of course, is control the game, control the clock. Let's just spin that forward because it's a fun subject. Bart Scott, is that the recipe for someone to knock out Kansas City? We're all trying to figure out, is there anyone who could knock off Mahomes? I've been making the case that it's Buffalo based on some of the things they can do. How do you see that? Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, the biggest threats to Patrick Mahomes in the AFC. I mean, I think it's correct because they can keep the chains moving, but I think it's a lot easier for Tennessee to do that because they're handing the ball off to Derrick Henry. I think if you ask Lamar Jackson, one bad hit, one, one rib shot, you know, one leg injury, and I think that that derails them. But, you know, when you talk about beating the, the Kansas City Chiefs, I think that the Ravens defensively has always had the wrong uh, game plan. They're trying to match these guys man to man because they feel like they have Peters. They feel like they have Humphreys. They went out and they invested money in Levine. They have money in, in Jimmy Smith, but they need to make sure that they always keep two safeties high and they need to make sure that they get in these faces of these receivers and make sure that they still have you know, the opportunity to, to be able to have two guys deep and be able to have guys that can make up for when they you know miss somebody or they go horizontally. That's why they've always got blown out against Kansas City because they think they can beat Kansas City at their own game, which they can't. They have to make sure and make Mahomes have to you know, beat, you, beat you by death by a thousand paper cuts and hope that they can score enough and run the football down that poor Kansas City defense. Remember, th those two teams met 
on a Monday night at the beginning of this season, what literally feels like five years ago, and the Chiefs yeah. blew them out, and that <laughs> sort of began this year going in the wrong direction for Baltimore. And as we looked at that graphic, it is worth pointing out, if they hadn't changed it to seven teams this year, the Ravens would be in real trouble, even as it is. They're not in a playoff position right now. We are just getting started on this. Saints are supposed to be the best team in the NFL. And injury and a bunch of other things. In your mind, at least in the NFC, where are the Saints right now? They still are the best team in the NFL, but they just have to get right. And I think they have to change their game plan. Last week, Drew Brees looked mediocre at best, only completing 15 passes, you know, under 50% of his uh, attempts. Also, they need to start running the ball and going through Alvin Kamara. I mean, whenever you get a young quarterback, we remember about all the aging quarterbacks back in the day. I think about John Elway. I think about Peyton Manning. It was led by a strong running game. They're asking him to do too much. We don't know how healthy he is from the ribs. And Michael Thomas and him has to come back and get on the same page. But to protect Drew Brees and, his, and protect guys from putting uh, barbecue sauce on those ribs, you're going to have to run the football and have play action down the field. His attempts are allowing defenders just to sit on the football, understanding that he's not going to open up. And we don't know how healthy that cartilage is. People talk about the ribs itself and the punctured ribs, um, the, the punctured lung. But what about being able to open up and really rail back and really stretch those, that abdomen or those obliques and be able to push the ball down the field? I don't know how healthy and how confident he is in that. Well, we're going to wind up starting to see that, I suppose, here. Meanwhile, you mentioned Michael Thomas. A year ago, he was a legit contender for MVP. This has been something of a lost season for him, Mike Tannenbaum. What is your sense of what's going on there? Yeah, there's a lot of noise coming out of New Orleans that he's not happy there. He's only played in seven games, so we'll see how the postseason goes with him and Drew Brees. But I wouldn't be surprised if Michael Thomas was on another team next year. It's been a disappointing season. And I agree with what Bart Scott said, which is Drew Brees looked old and rusty. So this has to get better in a hurry. They have the chance to be the best team, but without a happy and focused Michael Thomas, I think they're very vulnerable in the playoffs. Yeah, we'll wait and see. We, we have a couple of weeks to try and get this thing figured out, fighting for that one seed. But right now they are well behind Green Bay in that chase. We will see that's a big game today, but it's not the only big story from the NFL. Let's turn our attention to another team that looked like it might have been the best just a few weeks ago. The Steelers started 11-0. You know the story. Since then, they've lost three straight. Their hold on the division is in serious jeopardy. But with a win against a very good indie team this weekend, they would wrap up the division. They would make their game the last week against Cleveland completely meaningless. And here's the story on Big Ben. He is averaging the fastest time to throw this season, 2.3 seconds. And he has struggled immensely on slower developing plays, which ranks among the worst in the NFL this season when taking three or more seconds to throw the ball. And so, you know what, Mike Tannenbaum, I'm going to hearken back to something you said on this show over the summer. And you got a lot of pushback, a lot of criticism. But you sort of made the point that older quarterbacks, when they sort of have taken all the hits they want to take, that ball comes out of there fast. I, I wonder what you are seeing right now in Ben. That's exactly right. And Greedy, you just mentioned it. He gets rid of the ball the fastest of any quarterback in the NFL. And Bart knows if you're a defender and you know the ball's coming out fast, it compresses the field. And what happens is that Von Bell play, that happens because you're not worried about the ball getting thrown over your head. And with Ben Roethlisberger right now, I saw it my first uh, first hand. When you look at guys like Vinny Testaverde, Jay Cutler in Miami, and Brett Favre, you get to a point, uh, Greeny, you don't want to get hit anymore. He looks like he's 39, and it's close to the end for Ben Roethlisberger. Man, well, so he's trying to ride off into the sunset here in what looked like a special season. So, Bart, as you watch it, what's wrong with the Steelers, and how do they fix it in two weeks? Uh, they've forgotten their identity. They forgot who they've always been. And what they've always been has been a physical football team on both sides of the ball. Yeah, Ben has only been sacked 12 times because he's chucking and ducking. This has been a team that's always been built by running the football. They're 31st in the league in running the football. And when you do that, you know, they're trying to run the football with using Juju Smith-Schuster, Ben getting the ball out of his hands. But like Mike Tannenbaum said, when, when you understand that as a defender, that the ball can't go over my head, and I can put the eighth man in the box, and I can shut down the running game knowing that you're not going to push the ball down the football field. Listen, I played with the late uh, Steve McNair, and he had, he had an a injury report that was probably about as big as a dictionary. And what happens is you just can't recover. For years, Ben Roethlisberger has been the Michael Myers of football. You knock him out, you think you killed him, he gets back up and rises back up like the, like the Undertaker. And Mike Thomas has been Paul Dangerously telling him to get up and rise. <laughs> but now he just doesn't have the ability or the willingness to take those type of hits 
you know, when you get older, you start realizing what you're playing for. You have children. You want to have quality of life afterwards. Ben has been hitting, hinting at retirement for years. And now I think he's finally going to get his wish because I don't think that he's going to retire. I think the Steelers are going to retire him. Well, that's a very interesting question. Ben did say in some reporting that Shefty did over the weekend that he would like to come back next year. But Mike T, his cap number is over $41 million for next season. You're the general manager. How does that work? I would keep him for one more year, Greeny. I would pay him $19 million in cash, which helps comprise that cap number. But I would draft his replacement in the first round of the 2021 draft and let Ben ride off into the sunset. It's just like what Kansas City did a couple years ago. You have a good veteran in Alex Smith. You draft Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes only starts one game his rookie year. The rest is history. Pittsburgh has to draft Big Ben's replacement next year because it's really close to the end. I just keep him for one more year, and then that's it. Uh, we shall see. Again, this, this sort of feels like it's a tipping point here for that team potentially. Go ahead, yeah. Bart. You had one more thought. Yeah, because I believe that you can't draft somebody because this is a team that's in their window. They're going to have to address the Bud Dupree if they're going to try and re-sign him back. But they need to go and get a veteran quarterback, somebody that's maybe a retread like a Jameis Winston, maybe trade for a Sam Darnold. They need to get somebody that can play right now. And if Ben wants to give the team a friendly discount like Drew Brees did, he's made all the money that he needs to make. Now it's about legacy and trying to win the championship. But I think they should go out and address that with a veteran, a guy that's young in the process that can sit behind Ben for a year. Uh, we will see. About 20 years ago, a, a Hall of Famer in, in, the, in the form of Jerome Bettis won the Super Bowl in his last game and rode off into the sunset. We'll see if Ben is able to do the same. Meanwhile.